welcome to the special Monday edition of DC Today. Uh, we are now, you know, getting deeper into June and some fun things to talk about today. I love the written Monday DC Today. Uh, I did cover a lot of ground, but I'm going to try to go through as much of it as possible with you here on the podcast and the video. I'm going to quickly get out of the way today's market action so we can go to more fun things the Dow ended up pretty much closed near the bottom of the day, down exactly 200 points, which is just 0.59%. Uh, futures were pointing positive last night and again this morning, um, but they then opened kind of flat and we went down from there and then we just sort of bounced around all day between down 100 and down 200. And that's on the Dow. In terms of the S&P, uh, it, it closed down just 20 basis points the NASDAQ down nine, so basically kind of flat. So really nothing super severe to talk about any of the markets. Um, I will say that la when the OPEC Plus announcement came out yesterday, um, and I was kind of deep into the, the markets last night, the futures on oil were above $74, up about 4%. You um, had a bit different of a risk on appetite Sunday evening than ended up being the case on Monday. Uh, but things were just kind of muted all around today. We'll talk about oil and so forth in a moment. Um, within today's market, it was uh, communication services up the most, but only at 58 basis points. It was industrials down the most, but only at 71 basis points down. And so, you know, really kind of a little flattish and, and not a big deal in the markets. The, and, and speaking of flattish, the 10-year bond yield closed at 369, which is where it closed on Friday as well. So you had a totally flat day in the bond market by the end of the, at the close. Um, as far as speaking of not flat and more exciting markets, Friday, which was the biggest uh, rally day we'd seen in the market all year, I believe, uh, and certainly the breadth was the highest. You had 11 advancers for every one decliner in the S&P 500. Um, you now have 53% of the companies in the S&P trading above their 200-day moving average. It had been as low as 40% last week. And so, look, we spent most of 2021 with over 80% of the market trading above its 200-day uh, moving average. It has not been back to that level since about the beginning of Q4 2021. And uh, yet, you know, sits stuck here around the 50% range would suggest a kind of a uncertain market. Um, News-wise over the weekend, I mean, President Biden signed the bill into law. The Senate had passed it. The House had passed it earlier in the week. And so the debt ceiling deal is signed and done, and we're kind of over that. Um, but in terms of the uh, news over the weekend that I wanted to focus on, I do plan to talk in a moment about the oil markets and, and what exactly was said out of OPEC+. Plus. But I think that this um, release from the uh, vice chair of the Fed, who's the director of supervision, and the early reports that are not official or confirmed indicating potential plans to make um, large banks add about 20% to their capital uh, requirements. I think it's a big, big deal. It's a real form of tightening. And uh, they also, by the way, are in, uh, decreasing the level that they're calling a large bank in terms of what's the level of assets you have to have to be subject to these stricter capital requirements, it was going to be $250 billion in assets at a given bank. And they're now talking about lowering that to $100 billion. So we want to follow that carefully. I think it all the more speaks to something I wrote in a Dividend Cafe a couple weeks ago, but um, tightening the level of lending capacity at banks and thereby probably increasing appetite for private credit as well. So there's two sides to that coin. Um, as far as within the NASDAQ surge and certainly big tech's move here in the last couple of months, um, you know, it's a fair question. Is, is this a, a more speculative fervor that, you know, may not end real well? And I do want to point out that call option buying on large cap growth and, and big tech names is hitting all-time highs. 
it's really hard to interpret that as anything other than frothy speculation. I don't generally think that you see in call options um, the best form of sentiment as far as uh, future responsible investor outcomes, but um, I'll just share the facts with you for now and let you interpret it yourself. Um, there is a link in the DC Today that I would check out if you're so interested in keeping an inventory of the different levels of crypto coin failures going back a number of years. It's quite funny and also quite fascinating. All right, so we know the Senate passed the debt default bill. We know Vice President Pence has pulled papers to announce a presidential bid himself this week. And we know New Jersey Governor, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, is said to be uh, entering the race this week as well, uh, along with North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. Um, the uh, DC Today actually talks about New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu potentially getting in, but uh, he very uh, late in the day announced that he is not going to be running. And then we're still kind of waiting on confirmation from Miami Mayor Francis Suarez if he does indeed jump in, I believe that should be near the end of the field, but you know how that goes. Really one of the most important actors, I think, uh, in, in 2024 for the election is going to be Jay Powell. I think that the Fed um, has a lot to do with what's going to be happening on the political climate, whether they want to or not. Um, I mean, consider a couple of these scenarios. One, you avoid a recession, you claim a soft landing, you see unemployment stay low, uh, even as inflation was clearly beat back. That, all those facts together, if they were to play out, that becomes a pretty compelling Dem uh, Democrat Party campaign commercial, right, as the incumbent party. Uh, but let's say you enter a recession, you see credit tighten to a point of pain across the economy, uh, job losses finally come, and yet all the while you're still saying inflation is a problem. You know, it's pretty hard for any incumbent to run against that set of circumstances, no matter who their opponent may be. So I, do I think the central bank has a political agenda? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that they're politically neutral. Uh, but do I think that they are going out of their way uh, to consciously drive monetary policy around one of those two income, uh, outcomes. No, I don't think they are consciously. Um, on the economic front, uh, the jobs market uh, Friday showed 339,000 jobs created. It was well above uh, expectations, about 150,000 better than expectations, as a matter of fact. Unemployment rate came up from 3.5 to 3.7 percent, largely because the labor participation force number increased. The um, household survey, by the way, showed 300,000 jobs lost in May. So you're not getting alignment of indicators the way you might want to see. But the BOS survey um, itself showed a decline in hours worked from 34.4 to 34.3. Not a huge decline, but nevertheless, you're not seeing that greater work week. Um, it, so it was a mixed bag. It was a very classic mixed bag probably skewed slightly to the positive side, but there were a couple of detractors in there as well. But here's the thing is if you believe there is job growth, which I do, and you believe there's muted GDP growth, which there obviously is, that is called really poor productivity. More people working, producing the same, just means that there is less productive activity in the economy. Um, this is in line with my Japanification theme I talk about all the time. By the way, ISM services came in today uh, barely above expansion, much lower than had been expected, 50.3 versus 52.4. You saw new orders fall, fall quite a bit. Prices paid dropped as well. So not into contraction mode, but nevertheless a little, a little downer of a, a services monthly number. I love the chart that I have in the DC Today today regarding house prices, and it's adjusted for inflation. The chart is not uh, requiring, it, re looking at what the inflation is, but it's actually adjusting for the inflation um, that basically, you know, home prices um, net of inflation are up 120% over the last 50 years while, while income is up, uh, you know, barely 18% net of inflation. Um, I think that basically the better way to put it is relative to income. 
Uh, median home cost about two times median income 50 years ago. It's now basically about um, four, four and a half times. So the percentage of what you have to spend on your income to get at home has gone through the roof. And I think that speaks to our just really monumental need for greater housing supply. Um, affordability is the key issue here. So uh, more and more looking very likely in the futures market like the Fed will uh, pause next week, not raise rates, but then the odds in the futures market are about 64% uh, for a hike at the July meeting. So 79% chance right now in the futures market of no move next week, 64% chance of a hike at the July meeting, and we're now down to only 47% implied probability of a cut by the end of the year. That number had been 100%. Again, that's by the end of the year. On the oil front, uh, first of all, oil prices have now hit $65 three times in the last three months, and all three times rallied off of that number to the upside. But uh, last night, Saudi Arabia announced they'll cut oil production an additional million barrels per day in the month of July. Um, that uh, brings their production to the lowest level it's been in years. OPEC Plus did not agree to additional production cuts, but the uh, ones already on the table will stay. Um, and then Saudi is uh, agreeing to additional cuts. OPEC Plus, though, on the other hand, as a body, these 23 countries, I believe it is, um, have agreed to extend their current production cuts all the way through 2024. So not a lot of help on the supply side for those who want to see oil prices come down. Check out the chart at the dctoday.com against doomsdayism. Tell me how 500,000 plus uh, deaths from geographical disasters per year coming down to just hundreds per year um, is not a sign of some really tremendous improvements in certain global conditions. The chart of the number of deaths from geographical disasters to where we are now is something to behold. I will leave it there. We have um, uh, another DC Today coming to you tomorrow. Uh, check out the dctoday.com for the Ask David and, of course, other charts and information we may have missed here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.